Did you know? Melee's soundtrack was such a feat that even the game's composers didn't fully understand its scope until they realized they'd need a live orchestra. Series creator Masahiro Sakurai was so adamant about using an orchestra that he promised to pay for it with his own money if he had to. Ultimately, only a select few songs in the game were recorded live, while the rest were created digitally. Even so, the composers doubt that players can determine which songs are digital compositions, such as the track for the Green Green stage. One song that was recorded live is Melee's remix of the DK rap. Although the remix features numerous changes in tempo, the actual track was recorded all at the same speed. Certain parts were sped up during editing, which caused the vocals to change pitch. Additionally, the remix features the character select music from the original Smash Brothers mixed in. The theme for Melee's opening cinematic was also recorded live. While the orchestra was recording in another room, Sakurai was going over the cinematic in real time with the performance, making notes on which parts were in or out of sync with the music. Sakurai's work became so intense that he once fainted from exhaustion after recording finished and had to be given an IV at the hospital. This isn't the only display of Sakurai's work ethic. For several months towards the end of development, Sakurai only took a single day off work. With such an ambitious project, it was inevitable that some features would be left out during production. When he first started working on a sequel to Smash Bros., Sakurai included an idea for 8-player multiplayer in his planning documents. However, in Sakurai's words, the technical limitations of the GameCube made the idea more than impossible. This mode appeared in the Wii U version of Smash Bros., and even on a much more powerful system, the mode was a struggle to implement. Melee's debug menu reveals that Ditto was once intended to appear as a Pokémon within the Pokéball item. If Ditto is inserted into the game via hacking, it'll make a brief appearance and speak its name. Ditto may have been cut very late into development, as it's even mentioned in Melee's official English strategy. Guide. The guide states that Ditto would turn into a copy of whichever character released him and temporarily join the battle as their ally. Ditto's mechanics sound similar to the series' assist trophies. Although Ditto wasn't planned as an assist trophy, assist trophies were planned to appear in Melee. Another unused item was the Japan-exclusive character Sukapon from the fighting game Joy Mecha Fight. According to Sakurai, players could ride Sukapon and cause havoc. The character was left out of Melee entirely because of financial and legal issues. Pokémon were planned to be stage hazards on the Pokémon Stadium level, similar to Saffron City in the original Smash Bros. This feature had to be scrapped due to programming issues, but some of the creatures were salvaged and put inside the Pokéball item. Sprout Tower from the Johto region of Pokémon was planned to be a stage very early on, but it was left out. A hidden stage for the Ice Climbers was also considered, named Summit. There's a cut stage in the game titled Ice Top, which has a similar meaning to its name, and may be the remnants of Summit. Also within the game's data are several test stages in earlier versions of finished levels, as well as a level called Akaniya that crashes upon loading. Sakurai later confirmed that Akaniya was the name of a scrapped Fire Emblem stage that would have featured interactive stage elements, such as catapults and a dragon. Melee stages also have some interesting secrets. The game's temple stage has markings on the edges of some platforms. Although they resemble Hylian, these markings are gibberish and are simply rotated on either side of the Triforce. Since the resolution would make the text readable in Smash on the Wii U, the writing was updated to actual Hylian when the stage was remade. The text is Romanized Japanese and spells Sumashu Budazazu, which can be interpreted as Smash Brothers. Melee's trophies also hold some interesting secrets. Several of them display a reflection of what is actually an image of Osohe Castle taken from the cancelled title Earthbound 64. The Metroid trophy has a reflection of the title screen from Super Metroid, and the Metal Mario trophy shows Melee's Yoshi's Island stage. Ayumi Tachibana has a reflection of a cat's face, and the Fire Kirby trophy is reflecting a baby. When Sakurai was coming up with new characters for Melee, he decided to include a character from the Nintendo Entertainment System era. The characters considered for this spot included a Balloon Fighter, the Urban Champion, an Excite Bike Racer, and Bubbles from Clue Clue Land. Designers were unable to come up with a viable moveset for Urban Champion and Bubbles, whereas the Balloon Fighter had no way to fight without his balloons. The Excite Bike Racer, on the other hand, was ruled out due to difficulties figuring out how he would move and jump during gameplay. Ultimately, Ice Climbers would become the candidate to represent the NES era. Takamaru from Nintendo's The Mysterious Murasame Castle was briefly considered as well, but was rejected due to his lack of representation in the West. 
Banjo-Kazooie and James Bond were among the characters requested by fans that were held back from inclusion due to licensing concerns. Banjo, a rare owned character, drifted permanently out of Nintendo's reach once the company and its properties were acquired by Microsoft months before Melee's initial release. James Bond also faced issues, such as actors' likenesses, movie rights, and realistic firearms, which limited his chances even further. One of the most highly requested characters was Wario, who actually came close to being included, but was dropped due to time constraints. In addition to that, Sakurai had reservations about filling the game with too many Mario characters. Nonetheless, he stated that if they were given the time to add one more character, it would have been Wario. Other characters who couldn't be included for similar reasons were Sonic the Hedgehog and Solid Snake, who were requested by the former head of Sonic Team, Yuji Naka, and Metal Gear series creator, Hideo Kojima. Kojima's son was a big fan of Smash Brothers and asked his father if one of Kojima's characters could have a place in the game. This prompted Kojima to call Sakurai and ask for Snake to be featured as a guest character. At one point, the developers intended to cut Ness from the game and replace him with Lucas, the protagonist of Mother 3, a game which was still in production at the time. However, Mother 3's development would eventually fall off track, causing Ness to stay. In an interview with Nico Nico, Sakurai revealed that he also considered including Ayumi Tachibana from the Famicom Detective Club, of which Sakurai is a fan. Since the series was never released outside of Japan, her international appeal was limited, preventing her from making the cut, although she did appear in the game as a trophy. Nintendo thought about removing Marth and Roy from the North American version of Melee, as their games had yet to release in the West. In the end, Nintendo of America decided to leave them in because they were, quote, fun characters. Did you also know that the original Smash Brothers was nicknamed Pepsi Man early in development? For more Smash Brothers facts, click the annotation on screen. Also, check out Source Gaming, which most of this episode's trivia came from. If you want even more video game history and knowledge, feel free to check out my channel, The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching.